back, everybody, to another edition of MLB DFS Quick Hits, your Monday, June 18th edition. We got a nine-game slate on tap, and we have a lot of weather to pay attention to. So hope everybody had a good weekend as we have a wild one on our hands here. Good Father's Day for all the fathers out there. Uh, real quick, the totals on the slate, Yankees, Nationals, that game is going earlier, so it's not on the slate. Brewers, Pirates, 8.5. Cardinals, Phillies, 8.5. White Sox, Indians, 8.5. Dodgers Cubs, it's in it's in Chicago, so they're waiting on the weather. Blah 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 blah. Tampa Bay, Houston, they're waiting on Ryan Stanick was the announced starter late, late, late last night, so no numbers out there just yet. Rangers, Royals, nine and a half. Mets, Rockies, and Coors at nine and a half. So yes, a nine and a half Coors total. Degrom to thank for that. Diamondbacks, Angels, eight. Marlins, Giants, seven and a half. Uh, quick look at your weather. Milwaukee, Pittsburgh, blowing out to left field about 11, 12 miles an hour. Pretty warm, high 80s in that one. St. Louis, Philadelphia, blowing out to right field about 11 miles an hour. About high 80s in that one as well. So good hitting environments there. White Sox, Cleveland. Rain, 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 rain coming in in that one. Uh, as the game goes on, it gets worse and worse and worse. Hopefully it changes, but that's the initial look at the forecast. And the wind's blowing out to right about 12 miles an hour in that one. Dodgers, Cubs, same as Cleveland. The rain's coming in. As the game goes on, it could start, and maybe it, it fades off and doesn't get there, but keep an eye on that. Texas and the Royals, this is the game we want to play. It's blowing out to left, left center at about 14 miles an hour, and it's hot, 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 hot. We saw how it's been the last week in Kansas City. We've been targeting it. It's been going off. It's another good one tonight. And then Mets and the Rockies, rain coming in later. Not as bad as those other rain games, but still... Something to keep an eye on. So we have nine games. Nine games we can target. Three have chances of rain. Keep an eye on that as it gets closer to lock time. Now let's look at those pitchers. Your top priced arm. You have three guys over 11K. Cole, Bauer, DeGrom. We're going to look at two of them. Garrett Cole at 13,000 at home against the Houston or against the Tampa Bay Rays because he is on the Houston Astros, Bubba. Monday morning, everybody. But uh, we know what Cole can do. Outstanding. 29 points per game on average. <clears throat> got hit around a little bit against Oakland. Still got you 17 points. He gets you 6 or 7 Ks or more in every single start. But we've talked about it many times. He can have the tendency to give up the long boys. Giving up 2 in 2 of his last 3 starts. But you have a Tampa Bay team that strikes out 22% of the time on the season. And overall it's been a lot more in the last, I'd say, few weeks. Because Jake Bauer strikes out quite a bit. William Adamas brings power to the lineup and strikes out a ton. So... There's obviously a lot to like with Garrett Cole. You don't have to sugarcoat this one too much. But uh, when lefties hit, two, uh, da, 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 da. lefties hit 245, righties 308, they have a 130 ISO, which is below league average. They don't have a ton of power. Sure, the short portion right might help a few pop out. But as a whole, Garrett Cole is an outstanding play tonight, and there's nothing wrong with that. My favorite play up here is Trevor Bauer. Hopefully the weather stays away here because he's 12-4 at home against the White Sox. Uh, Cleveland's offense much, much better at home. Trevor Bauer just got done facing Chicago his last time out. Seven and two-thirds, four hits, three earned, struck out 12, 31 DraftKings points. He's got like 30 or more, I think, in five of his last six, 25 or more in like seven of his last 10. He has double-digit Ks. He has 11 or more Ks in four straight starts. He has 10 or more Ks in five of his last six. Uh, so obviously the double-digit Ks correlate with his 30-plus point performances. And Chicago's a team that strikes out a ton. His the team, like, he gave up three runs and still got you 12 Ks and 30-plus points. And he didn't pick up the win. That's how good this is. And he goes deep into games. He's a minus 240 home favorite. White Sox strike out 25% of the time. So even if they run into a sub, it's fine. They have the lowest team total on the slate. Tampa Bay doesn't have one yet, so they might be lower. But the White Sox a 3.12 team total. Lefty's 273, righty's 300. Trevor Bauer is an outstanding play. We were all over him last time he faced Chicago. We'll be all over him again this time. So up top, I got Bauer 1, Cole 2. Now we dip into about the 7,800 and uh, above range. We start with Miles Mikolas at 8,300 bucks. He's at the Philadelphia Phillies. A good hitting environment in Philadelphia. Mikolas doesn't strike out a ton. We know this. Uh, he's got, you know, five or more. He's got basically got five Ks in three of his last five, uh, four or and he's got five or more in four of his last five. So he has a tendency once in a while to get it going. But this is more of a cash game play than a GPP. He just doesn't have that humongous upside. Philly does strike out 27% of the time, which I think really does help you here. Uh, they have some power in that lineup. No hiding that at all. They have a 4.3 total. Lefty's 326. Righty's 249 versus Mikolas. 
So the lefties in that lineup could be very live, uh, especially in GPPs, because they'll get overlooked with Nicholas on the mound. So keep that in mind. But he does make for an interesting play on a short slate with uh, not the best of options out there. So a guy like Miles Mikolas is definitely someone you can take a look at. Uh, the other guy I'll be looking at here is Caleb Smith. 7800 bucks at the San Francisco Giants. Caleb Smith, uh, he's been a, kind of the roller coaster ride for us of late. He's uh, averaging 16 points on the road. He faced the Giants once this year, 6 and a third, 8 hits, 3 earned, only 4 Ks for 11 DraftKings points. But uh, very up and down arm, very good arm though, going to a nice pitching environment given his home environment's pretty much just as good. But the Giants strike out about 23% of the time versus lefties. There's no uh, no Longoria to worry about given he wasn't the, a world beater, but he wasn't a massive uh, – he, he did hit lefties well. The thing with Caleb Smith, big fly ball guy, does give up a lot of hard contact, so you got to keep that in mind. But the Giants, a 4.1 total. Lefties, 334. Righties, 324. The Giants have an okay Woba, 315 versus righties, but a below average ISO of 149, so not a lot of power when it comes to the Giants against uh, lefties. So Caleb Smith at 78 is definitely someone I'm looking at there as we go into the, tonight. So in this middle range, i got Smith 1, Mikolas 2. Now we drop below and below, I'm saying 73 and below, and we kick it off with Nikki Pavetta at 7300 bucks. Pavetta burned us so bad his last time out, a nice 2.7 DraftKings points. He's back at home where he averages 20.4 points per game. He was at home his last time, the part that sucks. But it's just, it's an up and down ride with Pavetta. We've seen a guy, you know, less than a month ago, he was getting you 25 plus DraftKings points. He had a stretch of 31, 38, 27. And then he had a hiccup and then more 20-plus point performances. He has great strikeout stuff. He's facing a St. Louis team that strikes out 22.5% of the time. A St. Louis team that's almost all right-handed, uh, and they have a team total of 4.2. Lefties hit 358 off Pavetta. Yes, Matt Carpenter could be a phenomenal play. But righties only hit 275. Uh, they have an average Woba of 308 and a below-average ISO of 144 versus right-handed bat, uh, pitching. It's risky. Great hitting environment tonight. We already talked about it's going to be warm. Wind's blowing out to right. But that righty-heavy lineup for the Cardinals makes Nick Pavetta a very, very interesting GPP play because it's one of those where he could get beat around again and maybe <clears throat> maybe something's really wrong with him. Or this could be one of those where we see that that 25-plus point performance where he strikes out a handful, gives you six or seven quality innings, and puts it together at a $7,300 price tag. This is a guy we used to pay 85, 95. He was even in the 10Ks at one point in time. So it's definitely a guy you could look at and um, build around in a GPP here and save some cash. Other than that, you got Dylan Covey at 7K. This guy has sneaky, been sneaky good. Uh, he's going to Cleveland, where Cleveland, again, we already mentioned, plays better at home. He faced them twice this year 11 and a third, 15 hits, 4 and 8Ks, averaging 13.4. He's better at home than on the road. His last start against them was at home, where he's 7 innings, 10 hits, 2 earned, 5 Ks for 19.8. So essentially 20 points. He's got you 20 or more in three straight starts. Uh, it is risky against Cleveland, of course. It's a GPP play. Uh, he'll be extremely low owned. He's just been managing to get it done. Cleveland strikes out 22% of the time. Uh, he has a 52% ground ball rate, but gives up a lot of hard contact. So as long as he's keeping it on the ground on Bench with Bubba, I recorded last night, episode 101. I had special guest Paul Sporer of Fangraphs on, and we talked about Dylan Cubby. And, you know, you can give up a lot of hard contact if it's on the ground, and you can live with it. So it's something to keep in mind. By no means am I saying this is a much play. Currently, Cleveland has the highest team total. We're still waiting for four more totals, and you might get an Astros total that goes through the roof. But Cleveland's 5.4. Lefties are only hitting 289. Right, he's only 298 off of Cubby. Like I said, he's getting the job done on the ground. As long as he does that, he's fine. But if he starts to let him elevate it, the ball can go a long, long ways. Plus, watch for the weather in this one as you build. Last guy I'll mention here, I think he'll be a popular pick down here, and rightfully so, is Andrew Suarez of the Giants. 6800 bucks at home against the Miami Marlins. At home this year, he's got a 3.55 ERA compared to a 6.18 on the road, averaging 18 DraftKings points per start at home. He faced Miami his last time, though, in Miami. Five innings, five hits, two earned, only three Ks. Prior to that, he had five or more Ks and three straight starts, and he got you a 7-6, but then a 28 and a 15-1. The 28 was at home against the Phillies. So his last home start was against the Phillies, and he had a bunch on the road. Then he pitched at home against Cincy for 10.1, a couple more roads. And then San Diego and Arizona were at home, 18-8 and 15-6. He's got big-time upside in this matchup against the Miami 
Marlins team strikes out about 21% of the time versus lefties. He's a 140 home favorite. Uh, doesn't walk a ton of guys. Ground ball is about 49%, which is outstanding. Does give up some hard contacts, so keep that in mind. That can be slightly terrifying. But Miami has the second lowest total at the moment, a 3.4. Lefties 236, righties 370. So you do have like the real Mutos, the Brentons who's heating up, the Andersons in that lineup to worry about from the, the right side, even some Starlin Castro. But when you dig even deeper into Miami, a 291 Woba and a 117 ISO, both below average. And that 117 ISO is way below average. It's more like the worst in baseball. And on this slate, it's the worst versus its starting pitcher handedness by far. The, or no, the Mets actually take the cake there. But we're not targeting, uh, we're not going to use Tyler Anderson in, in Coors, I'm sorry. But uh, outside of the Mets, who we expect to be horrible, the Marlins are second to them tonight in ISO and a much worse environment to hit in, in at t than Coors Field. So down below, I got Suarez 1, Pavetta 2, Covey 3. So very interesting options down there. So to recap your pitching real quick, we got Bauer 1, Cole 2 uh, up top. In the middle, you got uh, Caleb Smith, Miles Mikolas. Down below, Suarez, Pavetta, and Covey. Let's get into the bats on this nine-game slate. We'll kick it off with Evan Gaddis against Ryan Stanek. In uh, Houston, Gaddis is playing great. He's 4,300. He's worth a dart if you want to go up top there. He'll be super low-owned, I believe, at that price tag. You got JT Realmuto who's swinging it really, really well at 4,200. We mentioned how righties can get to Suarez. Realmuto, it's a horrible environment to hit in. He'll be super low-owned if you want to go there. Uh, you got Yasmani Grandal versus Tyler Chatwood at 39. That could be very interesting. Chatwood walks the farm, plus lefties can hit Chatwood quite a bit. But one of your better guys to get, and he's been priced down. He's been priced up for quite a while. But Salvi Perez is down to 3800 bucks. We take Kansas. We, we mentioned we want to target the Kansas City game against Texas. Salvi at 38 is a steal. Again, wind blowing out hard to left field. Royals have a 4.8 total. Lefties 352. Righties 400 versus Bartolo Colon. 400 for right-handed bats. So Salvi Perez at 38 is outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. One pitcher I forgot to mention and I want you to keep an eye on him, is Jaleese Chassin at 7,500 against the Pittsburgh Pirates. So I apologize for forgetting this one. Um, he doesn't strike out a ton. That's why I wasn't like sold sold on him, and the Pirates don't strike out a ton. But if you kind of want a cash game guy with some upside, Chassin can be your guy. So I want to throw him out there. He's kind of a – you don't want to use the word safe in baseball, but he's got a pretty good floor with some upside. It's just not a ton of strikeouts. So GPPs, he doesn't excite me. But even in GPPs, if you're not comfortable with some of these other guys, you can get Chessie in the 75 and you can go from there and make it work. All right, back to catchers. After Salvi Perez, you could drop down to, uh, you know, you got uh, John Ryan Murphy. Probably not so much, but if you want to get weird in Coors, Tom Murphy's 3,500 versus Jacob DeGrom. Get some value there. Uh, Nick Hundley for the Giants. If he's getting the start, he's 3,400 versus Caleb Smith. We mentioned uh, when it comes to the Giants. Lefty's 334, righty's 324 off Smith. Hundley's been playing really well when he's beginning his starts. Someone to keep an eye on there. Uh, Jan Gomes at 3300 has been just crushing baseballs. Someone to keep an eye on as well. Uh, Brian McCann at 3K versus uh, Ryan Stanek is a nice cheaper option as there won't be a ton of cheapies that are worth a look in this one. So Stanek definitely comes into play for you there. Other than that, I'm going to say check lineups because you make like a Martin Maldonado against Granke if you need to or a you know, a Nap versus Mikolas, but these are guys you're not running to target. Jeff Mathis will be catching. He's 2,600 for Arizona. He's Granke's personal catcher, so you'll get him super cheap versus Berea as well if you need to go that one. But uh, you're going to probably pay up a catcher a little bit, not a ton. Like, I love Salvi Perez. I think that's a great play. First base, you know, Goldsmith's on fire, but I'm not going to pay 55 for him. You can look at a guy like Eric Thames, who has come off the DL and he's played really, really well. He's 4,800 bucks, but. Uh, Big time pitchers park there in uh, Pittsburgh, so keep an eye on that. You got Rizzo versus Maeda, that's interesting at 47. The farther down you look, though, you got, got Cody Bellinger at 45 and Max Muncy at 45. I like both of those versus Tyler Chatwood. When you are looking at the Dodgers, they have a lefty's 395, righty's 322. So Muncy, Cha uh, Muncy Bellinger, the, like Bellinger's first base outfield, Muncy's first base third base, they're both in play at 4,500. Going to get Brandon Belt at 43. He can hit lefties just fine if you want to target Caleb Smith. Uh, if you're looking for lefties against Mikolas, Carlos Santana is in play at 42. I'm not running to target Mikolas, but he's there for GPPs. He'd be super contrarian. But in that Texas-Kansas City matchup, he's first base outfit eligible. You got, you got Joey Gallo. He's only 3,900 versus fly ball Ian Kennedy. 
I think that's an outstanding price tag to play at first base or the outfield. He's definitely in play for you there. Uh, Yuli Gurriel's been heating up. He's 3,800 versus Stanek. He can write he's just fine, so he's another guy. You know, If you're not paying up, you can definitely go that direction in that matchup. Uh, Wilmer Flores and Coors, he's first base, third base eligible, does love facing his lefties. He's 3,600. He's another guy to take a look at. Uh, if you aren't using Chassin, Josh Bell's 3,500, and when you want to target Chassin, you target him with lefties. So another guy to keep an eye on. But Marvin Gonzalez, really playing well of late. He's first base outfit eligible. He's averaging 8.5 uh, points in his last 10 games. Uh, 7, 15, 9, 15, 19. Good five-game stretch there uh, against Stanek and the bullpen. He's only 3400 bucks first base outfield. I've been using him a lot lately as like a, a cheaper outfield option. So somebody you could definitely keep an eye on there. Other than that, uh, it might not be too much more below there. Second base, you got Altuve at 5K. He's always in play for you. As Drew McCabrera at 4300 versus uh, Anderson's a nice, quote-unquote, cheaper Coors option. Uh, you got Cesar Hernandez at 4K is worth a look, but Daniel Descalso, 3,900, second base, third base versus Jaime Barria. Uh, when you look at Arizona, their team total is only three, or is only four. Lefties, 296, righties, 436, so massive reverse splits on Barria. So keep that in mind. Uh, Ketel Marte at 38, I don't mind either. There's Matt Carpenter, if you aren't using Pavetta, Carpenter, second base, third base at 38, could be a nice cheaper option for you. Um, Alan Hansen of the Giants at 35. Yohan Moncada, if you're fading, Bauer at 34 is in play as well. But Kiki Hernandez, uh, you're not losing him. Never mind, I was reading that wrong. My bad. But uh, other than that, you know, Ruby Odor in a GPP at 32, I guess. Uh, Kenner Falafa, he's second base, third base. He's 3,100 against Kennedy in uh, that big Coors-type matchup. So keep an eye on him as a nice cheapie there at uh, 3,100 for you if you need some value at a position. Second base and third base, he's forty-one or $3,100. Going over to the third base position, you got uh, Jose Ramirez at 5400 versus Dylan Covey. That's definitely worth a look. You got Arenado versus DeGrom. Uh, Bregman versus Stanek, I like a lot of 46. Bregman continues to just hit the baseball so, so well. Mentioned Max Mundy, Muncy at 45, but then Todd Frazier, a guy that in his career has hit lefties extremely well. 4400 bucks in Coors. Um... Mets have a 4.9 total. It's actually higher than the Rockies. Lefties 370, righties 301. So Anderson going with the reverse splits. I don't care. It's Coors Field. Go go have some fun, kids. Uh, Brian Anderson, third base outfit eligible. 4,200 versus Suarez is in play. Travis Shaw versus Trevor Williams at 41. Also in play. Trevor Williams, they moved him to the pen. He's back to the rotation for now. I don't know how many innings he's going to go. It could be interesting. But when you look at the Brew Crew, a 4-4 total. Lefties 353, righties 333 off of Williams. I, I'm not actively targeting this game because the ballpark is crazy. Uh, the thing is, though, it's blowing the wind's blowing out. It's going to be warm, so it's going to be a little livelier than normal. It makes for an insane GPP pivot. Um, I'm not saying stack away, but guys like Shaw, Thames, um, when we get to the outfield, there'll be options. But even on the other side with Bell, you know, Polanco, Marte, Harrison, a lot of those little pieces could be interesting come the night's in because you know Pittsburgh games you. You can see easily ending three to two, but when that park gets lively, you got two mediocre pitchers that can get shelled. It it has the recipe for a GPP game that no one's going to look at with Coors, with this Kansas City Texas game, and I'm all for Kansas City Texas, but this one opens things up just a bit. And then after those two games, people are going to go to Houston against Tampa Bay, Milwaukee Pittsburgh are going to be way down the list of things to do. Hey, and come nine o'clock tonight, that might be the right thing to do. But at this moment in time, when we're trying to look for angles, that's an angle. It's definitely an angle. You have a, a total in that game of, I believe it was eight and a half. Uh, yeah, eight and a half. You know, Milwaukee's a minus 120 road favorite, so it's pretty close. You got two average pitchers. There's a lot you can play with in this game. Um, Chassin, lefty's 354, righty's 289. Pittsburgh's got a 4.1 total. Milwaukee's at 4.4 total. Lefty's 353, righty's 333 versus Williams. It's interesting. Uh, both bullpens are you know a little better than average, so that kind of scares you a little bit. At the same time, get to them a couple times, get some value, enjoy. Could be interesting. A uh, guy I do like though, thirty nine hundred bucks too cheap in that Kansas City game is Mike Moustakis. I know he's kind of slumping a bit, but in that environment against Bartolo Colon, that is insanely too cheap. You got uh, Carpenter at thirty eight, Beltre. I know it's Ian Kennedy, it's righty righty, but Beltre, a I don't care. He's a veteran, can hit almost anything. 
And lefties at 380, righties at 366 off Ian Kennedy. So I'm just fine with Adrian Beltre at 3,700. So you got value there. Mitchell Wilmer Flores and Coors already at 36 against Tyler Anderson. Uh, Alan Hansen mentioned him already. Go down farther. Uh, you know, Matt Davidson, if you want to go weird, against Bauer at 33. Because like we said, he will give up some, some up. He just strikes out enough to make him worth it. Uh, if you want value at third base, Colin Moran's only 3,300 versus Chassin. He's he, he went deep yesterday. His last few games, 14, 16, 9, 7, 9. So seven or more points in five straight games. He's 3,300 bucks versus Chassin. We mentioned lefties versus Chassin. Definitely someone to keep an eye on there. Again, Kinder Falafa is only 3,100 uh, down below. And like a Louis Valbuena at 3K and Big time GPP dart, but I'd rather get to like Colin Moran if I want a GPP dart at 3,300. And he's less of a dart to me than Valbuena because Chassin can get hit. Go to the shortstop position, Lindor at 51. Yeah, he's in play versus Covey. But you got Correa, who's absolutely on fire. 4,800 bucks. I like him more than Lindor. He's probably the top guy up there. Uh, B. Craw, don't look at him because he's going to be on bereave- or, uh, paternity leave for the next three games as his wife has a baby. So he will be out. Uh, Jerks and Profar, crushing baseballs. He is a phenomenal play at 3,900. The, the the best part about this Kansas City game, these guys are so cheap. Most of them have been 4K or below. Most of them. It's it's stupid. So Profar, 3,900 bucks, outstanding play. This is your top shortstop on the slate. I love it. Absolutely love it. Phenomenal play against Ian Kennedy. So you scroll down some more if you haven't picked Profar yet and you need some value, you could, uh, there's not much down here to be honest with you. But you will find some below 3K-ish. Uh, Ahmed Rosario and Coors, only 2800 versus Tyler Anderson. Rosario coming from the right side of the plate. Definitely 2800 bucks in Coors is redonkulous. Uh, Alcides Escobar in that Kansas City-Texas game is only 2700 versus Bartolo Colon. Another nice value play there. You know, you got JT Riddle at 2700 um, Kelby Tomlinson should get the start for the Giants. He's second base shortstop. He's only 2600 so there is some definite value down below there. If you need to punt at shortstop, you can find something. Head to the outfield, you got Trout at 6K. You got Blackman against DeGrom at 54. But Springer at 5K is definitely in play. Nimmo at 49 versus Anderson. Absolutely love it. Uh, Brantley's crushing baseballs. Peralta's on fire. But Christian Yellick and Lorenzo Cain, 4,700 each in that Milwaukee-Pittsburgh game. Good, good looks there. You go down farther, mentioned Cody Bellinger already at 45. Uh, Shen Su Chu in Kansas City at 4,500 is in play for you as well. The Jock Jams in your GPPs at 44 versus Chatwood. Definitely take a look at that one. Uh, the farther down we look, you got the likes of uh, Reese Hoskins. He's heating up at 44. McCutcheon versus the lefty Smith at 43 is a nice play. McCutcheon's been swinging about really, really well. Does like him some lefties, so keep an eye on McCutcheon at 43. Uh, Austin Meadows against Chassin. If you are targeting that game or you want to get weird, Meadows has cooled down a little bit. Still playing very well. Averaging still five points a game, so he's not a complete bust every time out, but not the boom you're hoping for. He's 43 versus Chassis. Nice lefty bat there. Conforto at 42 in Coors with some nice upside. Uh, you scroll some more. Maybe some Matt Kemp if you want to get weird against Chatwood. But Cargo and Coors at 4K if you're playing the Coors slate. Mazzara at 4K versus Kennedy if he's in the lineup. That's a really good play. Same with Joey Gallo at 39. Love that. Uh, Gerardo Parra and Coors at 38 is another value. Even though it's DeGrom, I'm not looking to target DeGrom by any means, but uh, value for Coors is what I'm mentioning if you're trying to stack Coors. Uh, farther down you look, you know, Corey Dickerson's only 3,800 versus Chessine, a nice uh, GBP type gamble there. Gregory Polanco had a big game yesterday. He's 3,700. It's like boom or bust with Polanco, just so you realize it. 28 yesterday, 0, 0, 7, 4, 18, 0, 0, 2, 9. It's all or nothing with Gregory. So his GPP play at 3,700 could be another one tonight. You go down to the 35s and below. Jason Hayward swinging a good bat at 3,500. Delano the Shields in that uh, Coors Light type game at 3,500 in play. Uh, Odebel Herrera at 35 is a, a sneaky play versus Mikolas. He's been heating up with a big home run for us yesterday. But Marvin Gonzalez, again, only 3,400 bucks. That's value for you there. Nick Williams in a GPP at 34. I can get behind. Josh Reddick's only 3300 bucks. I do like that against Stanek in the bullpen. That's a nice cheap angle there. Uh, Mac Williamson's only 3300 versus versus uh, Caleb Smith. That's a big GPP home run type bat there. So I do like that. Lonnie Chisenhall at 32, another GPP. Gorky Hernandez leading off for the Giants at only 32. So you get some nice Giants value as well if you don't want to go to other value like Mac Williamson, Gorky's both nice cheap right-handed value in that Giants lineup. 
when you get down to the bottom of the 3Ks and you head into like Austin Jackson, 31, I'd rather have Gorky's or Mac, but Jax is there. But Lewis Brinson's only 3K. I think this is an outstanding value play. Yes, he's dicey. Yes, he's still hitting a buck 76 on the year, but he's really started to, to get going here. Remember, he's a super young prospect. He had a zero yesterday with an 18, an 8, a 5, a 0, a 15, a 2, a 0, a 4. Um, 3K, you can take those gambles. That's what you're punting for, 3K. he got tremendous upside. We've seen um, Suarez pitch really, really well. He can strike guys out a ton, but he can also give up a lot of hard contact like we talked about. So a guy like Lewis Brinson at 3K in a GPP could bring back some value for you. In that in that Coors Light game, Texas and Kansas City, you got Alex Gordon, only 2,900 versus Bartolo Colon. Yes, Gordon can be tilting as tilting can be, but that is extremely, extremely cheap. So that does it for your bats on this nine-game slate. Recapping your pitching real quick. you got Trevor Bauer, one. Garrett Cole, two. In the middle, Caleb uh, Smith uh, and Miles Mikolas, one and two. Down below, Suarez, Pavetta, and Cubby. So, again, not the greatest pitching. Tons of weather to worry about. Let's talk about your BVP and send you on your way. Jed Jericho, four for five with a double and a homer off Pavetta. Tommy Pham, two for four, or one for two with a homer. Marcelo's in a two for 10 with homers. They're not hitting with big average, but they've had a little pop against him. Uh, not big samples out there. We got Jose Abreu, who's hitting 297 on Trevor Bauer, 11 for 37, three doubles. But as a team, the White Sox have one home run, a Yomber Sanchez homer. He's one for 22 off of him. One hit was a home run. So they're hitting a buck 96 with one homer off Trevor Bauer. Love that game. Yasmani Grandal, 6 for 11 with a double, triple, and a homer off to Tyler Chatwood. Jock Jams, 5 for 11, two doubles and a homer. Uh, Matt Kemp, 6 for 17 with a homer. The Dodgers could be another sneaky stack as people don't want to go that direction, but uh, could be a nice one. There is rain in the forecast later in that game, so be careful. Alex Gordon, 4 for 13, two doubles and a homer off Bartolo, so that's good to see with 2,900 bucks. Uh, Beltre's taken, Kennedy deep. Carlos Gonzalez, 3 for 10 with a double and a homer off the Grom. Desmond, 5 for 16 with a homer. Uh, Justin Upton, 10 for 29, two doubles, a triple, and two homers off Zach Granke. Trout's 5 for 13 with a double and two homers, or two triples. Balbuena hitting 423, 11 for 26, three doubles and a homer. Albert Pools, 10 for 29, six doubles. So uh, just some experienced bats against Granke in that Angels lineup. So I'm going to keep an eye on there. Very small sample. McCutcheon, two for three with a double and a homer off Caleb Smith. Uh, and that should do it. That'll wrap it up. There's your quick hits in the books. Check us out, thesportsdgens.com, at thesportsdgens. I am at BD Intric. Uh, again, New Bench with Bubba, episode 101 with Paul Sport is out and about. And go check out episode 100 with Brian Slack of Baseball HQ. Really good stuff there as well. Speaking of Slack, join us in the Slack chat. Just ask for an invite. Tons of good talk in there. Um, a lot going on this week. Francesco's got his Phase 1 uh, World Cup picks already out. Phase 2 dropped today. We got Dana with her pitching primer out there. She joined the staff. We got a couple more people coming up later this week. And we'll have your golf coverage, as always. The U.S. Open was very intense this weekend. And Jesse and I will be recording tonight for the Travelers. So a lot coming up here, as usual, on thesportsdgens.com. So go check us out. Good luck on this nine-game slate. This was your MLB DFS Quickets Monday, June 18th edition. I'm out.